Hey guys, welcome back. Today's viewer question is from Joe, and he wants to know more about Ford Technical Service Bulletin 06-21-19, and it has to do with heater core leakage and electrolysis. So I thought I would take this opportunity because it applies to all Panther cars, Crown Vic, Grand Marquis, Town Car, Marauder, P71, P7B from 1992 to 2011. So first I'd like to say a quick word on coolant type and change interval and then I'll go over the technical service bulletin and then we'll go over to the car and take a measurement reading with the voltmeter. Uh, before we get into it I'd like to read the results of this week's community poll and if you're taking the time to vote and leave good feedback comments I really appreciate it because it helps me put these lame videos together. So uh, in 11 hours we got 121 votes and the question was what is an acceptable voltage in a Panther car's cooling system? And 8 people said 0.1 volts, 8 people said 0.2 volts, 8 people said 0.3 volts, 13 people said 0.4 volts, and 81 people said guess what Sunday's video is about. So um, Real quick about uh, coolant type is um, if you want to know uh, what uh, coolant type is recommended by Ford for your car, I found this handy dandy uh, application chart and I'll leave a link to this down below. And uh, in the owner's manual, it says the green coolant is good for uh, 30,000 miles or three years and the gold coolant is good for three years 50,000 miles so it looks like they both need to be changed out at three years but the gold stuff lasts 50,000 miles and the green stuff only lasts 30,000 miles okay so this uh, technical service bulletin <clears throat> this is it right here and uh, if you this this technical service bulletin is three pages long and uh, I'm just going to read a, a short snippet of it and then I've try, kind of uh, translated it into some plain English with a very quick summary. And if you want to read this entire uh, technical service bulletin, I'll put a link to this down below. And this was issued on October 17, 2006. And it says on here, Issue. The majority of repeat heater core leaks are due to high flow rate or use of poor quality coolant. However, electrolysis should be should also be checked especially when repeat repairs have occurred. <clears throat> so um, so what is uh, electro what is coolant electrolysis? Well there's there's really a neat interesting explan scientific explanation for it that can go on for you know, maybe an hour, uh, but I tried to uh, put it into one sentence, and if you'll forgive me, uh, basically it means as the coolant ages, uh, el uh, electricity can build up in it and cause havoc uh, with other systems. So, uh, ac according to this technical service bulletin, there's three factors of aggravation. Uh, number one is the high flow rate in the heater core. Uh, number two, it said poor quality coolant, and number three is electrolysis, of course. Now, uh, what I think they mean by the high uh, flow rate is they may be, um, there's too much uh, pressure or too much flow going through the uh, heater core, and that is, uh, is causing a problem with when combined with these other two things. And what I mean by that is when you have fluid uh, going through a pipe or a tube and it's going in a straight line uh, everything is hunky-dory no problems but when you have a, a, a curve in the line like this and if there's impurities in the uh, fluid like mineral deposits uh, as the uh, fluid goes through the uh, pipe or the tube it's going to work like a bead blaster or a sand blaster on this outer edge of the uh, tube or the passageway. And if you combine that with a high flow rate going very fast, it's just going to be a matter of time until it wears a, a pinhole leak 
uh, in one of these uh, surfaces. So I think that's what they mean by high flow rate. And uh, they say uh, poor quality coolant. Uh, I don't have any proof, but what I would like to think is that uh, people are, um, use, are adding coolant and they're mixing it 50-50 with tap water or well water and they're not using uh, distilled water. And I think we all know what tap water can do is it's got those uh, extra hard water uh, debris and minerals and whatnot and combined with the high flow rate uh, it's it's working like little uh, beads of sand microscopic beads of sand wearing away parts of uh, uh, the heater core and whatnot so uh, that uh, just reiterates how important it is to use distilled water when you're using or when you're uh, doing your coolant services and the last one, electrolysis. I'm not sure how this uh, causes, contributes to the uh, heater core leaks, but I'm sure they've got it figured out. So when it comes to a coolant service, I, I have a feeling it's one of those things that falls by the wayside, like you know, brake fluid or power steering fluid, and we always uh, keep putting it off. You know, it's not real important like engine oil. You know, I think everybody's on top of their engine oil changes. But when it comes to coolant, power steering, and brake fluid, you know, those are just not as sexy uh, things to do and whatnot. So I think that's why we have those uh, testers for coolant that you can take a, a coolant sample and you can test the uh, specific gravity of it and check the freeze protection, the corrosion protection, and they have those test strips to test the, uh, the, the pH level and the acidity and whatnot. So um, uh, this test uh, for electrolysis with a voltmeter, I think I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of doing this test every six months to keep an eye on the electrolysis in your uh, coolant, uh, just like as you would if you were doing uh, test strips or testing the freeze protection. And the reason why this is important is because... Um, um, if there's if there's an excess buildup of electricity in the coolant it can wreak havoc with engine sensors like the engine coolant temp sensor or any other sensor that shares a common ground uh, with the engine block or whatnot and what I mean by that is most uh, engine sensors work on a 5 volt reference and uh, if 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 enough electricity is building up in the coolant it can interfere with that 5 volt reference and the sensor can provide erroneous information to the PCM uh, to make its uh, decisions like uh, fuel trim and whatnot. So that's why I'm a fan of uh, testing uh, your coolant every six months uh, for uh, electrolysis and just taking a quick measurement because it's non-intrusive and it just takes a second. Okay, so now uh, let's get into the, uh, the testing methods for electrolysis that this uh, technical service bulletin outlines. So it's very simple, it's very easy. All you've got to do is you've got to get a basic voltmeter and you're going to connect the negative lead of the voltmeter to the uh, negative terminal of the battery and then you're going to take the positive lead and stick that in the uh, coolant and take a measurement and you're going to check for DC and AC voltage and if you find AC uh, check the diode in the alternator and then you're going to uh, record that measurement uh, write it down on a piece of paper for later because you're going to have to repeat this test in four different fashions the second one is you're going to go key on engine off to where you you turn the key on but don't start it and you'll take the same measurement and then you'll start the engine and run it at 2000 RPM and take that measurement again. And then you also want the uh, electric cooling fans to cycle on and off while you're uh, measuring that to see if there's a spike in electricity when the cooling fans turn on and off. And uh, the last one, uh, turn the engine off and remove both terminals from the battery post and uh, take a measurement again. And uh, after you've written down all those measurements, you're going to compare it with the uh, <clears throat> what this technical service bulletin um, says is the an, a, a go or a no-go. 
and what they say is uh, DC voltage of 0.4 volts or lower is okay or acceptable so that's 400 millivolts and if DC voltage is greater than 0.4 volts uh, you're supposed to flush the cooling system thoroughly and recheck. And if, you have, if you're having any problems with, these, with uh, voltage in the uh, coolant, uh, you need to check for loose or missing grounds on the engine ground, battery ground, and vehicle chassis ground. And it also talks about uh, you may need to install heavier gauge ground straps or additional ground straps. And I've got to give a shout out to Rich from Ford Boss Me. He's got two really good videos on how to add an additional ground strap. So I'll leave the links to those videos down below. Alright, let's head on over to the car and take a quick measurement. <clears throat> Okay, so just take your uh, negative lead of the uh, voltmeter and you're going to put it on the negative uh, terminal of the battery. And then we're going to stick this down in the coolant. And let's see if I can get my meter to zero uh, by touching a ground. Okay, so it looks like my meter is ready to go. And I'm going to stick this in here. And it looks like my reading is point zero eight five so eighty five milliamp and take it out put it back in okay now it's going up to point zero nine take it out now it's going to point one so it looks like I'm around point one or one hundred milliamps so um, using that 0.4 or 400 milliamp uh, threshold in the technical service bulletin, it looks like I have a, an acceptable amount of electrolysis. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.